All right, so how do we run a between subjects t-test and independent samples t-test? Same thing. Well, first, I've entered the data for us, and we'll, and we'll look at that together. We have participants in there. Um, those are just placeholders. You don't need those. But in Jamovi, everything is entered one row per participant. Each participant is in one condition and gives one dependent variable measure. Um, this is this my favorite study, coffee and tea versus energy. Um, so we have participant A got coffee and they have a five on energy and so forth. You can see all the data. This is an ID variable. It doesn't matter. You don't even need it for your analysis. I'm just showing you one row per participant with it. This is your categorical variable, your independent variable, your... Um, your grouping variable where you have two conditions. And this is a nominal variable. It's not ordinal or continuous. I want to point something out. You can change which level is on top or on bottom. Okay. That's going to be important for later. Your dependent variable is a continuous variable. Nothing, nothing new here. Now we want to do our t-test. Analysis, t-test, independent samples t-test, because this is between subjects design. Our dependent variable is our dependent variable, and our grouping variable is our independent variable. Now, we're getting students t-test. We're getting the Man Whitney U non-parametric test. We are getting the effect size and the 95% confidence interval of effect size. We are getting the descriptive plots. And we are, we can get descriptives as well. You can get other things if you'd like, but I find the, this to be the full output that I would want. One of the things I want to go back to, I want to go back to my data real quick and just show you something that happens here. Um, so if we look right now, my, my prediction is that coffee would lead to more energy, and we found that, and our effect size is positive. But let's just say you, you ended up looking at your data, and you found that coffee led to more energy than tea, but your effect size was negative. You can switch around the levels, which level goes first. So if I put coffee to the first level, coffee has the higher mean, so now my um, the sign on my effect size is positive and that goes along with my hypothesis so we just gotta look first things you do when you get your output is just like okay I predicted that coffee would have a higher mean than tea I found that is my effect size positive if it's not you gotta go into your levels into your data and switch which ones first all that does it's not it's not a lot of mental work. All it does is change the sign on your T-statistic, your effect size, your 95% confidence intervals, all those, all those changed. And watch it one more time. And we can see now exactly what I'm talking about. But ultimately, what do we have here? We have your T-statistic, your degrees of freedom, which you'll need, your P-value, non-significant, your effect size in the sample, your average effect size in your sample is 1.589. Um, lower limit is negative against your hypothesis, but small. Upper limit is large. We don't know much here. Um, is that due to violations of normality or outliers or any of that stuff? Let's look at the man Whitney, Whitney U. This is not significant as well, so no, it's not due to violations of assumptions. These will come in handy if you're making graphs and so forth, okay? Um, but ultimately, that's how you do it.